Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? It is Thursday evening and you guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook page with Brandy. Um, my name is Brandy, I'm with Brushed by Brandy and I'm a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. Um, I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern and um, you guys can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and I have a ton of videos on YouTube. So if you're just, look, uh, just starting out painting, head over there you guys. I have some series under the playlist section where we've done pieces from start to finish on camera together. So if you're just learning out, those are some good resources where you can see from start to finish pieces done on camera. Um, but tonight we are going to work on this bed frame. So last, was it last week? I did the would you bend moldings on this with you guys. So when I first started out on this headboard, it was really, really simple. Did not have a lot of detail. This was a blank open space. And um, you can see I've added a lot, a lot, a lot to this. So I've added a blended paint finish, the transfer, the would you bend moldings, and now I've got this bird motif in the center. These are all cast in resin. Um, and I've got a clear coat on my headboard right now. And um, I'll tell you guys why I put a clear coat on it. So when I have a paint finish that I like where my paint is and I wanna seal that paint so it's protected and I wanna put decorative finishes over the top, I put a clear coat on it and that means my paint is safe and if I mess up some of the decorative finishes I can wipe it all off you guys I can come at it with a baby wipe because my paint is sealed I'm not gonna mess up my paint finish so if you really feel nervous about playing with waxes or glaze or gilding waxes or adding in a painted detail whatever it is if you seal your paint underneath you can feel a little more at ease playing around on top of that okay so stupid question a lot of people, no comments. How do I correct that? No comments for you? Yeah. So swipe, and then they'll come There back. we there go. There we go. Uh, and we're back. Uh, you guys, my husband Sean is here as usual. Um, the maroon. He's my camera guy on Thursday evenings, but if you have any questions, pop on, and he will read those out to me so we can answer questions as we're going to. So one of the main things I wanted to talk to you guys about is when I use glaze versus when I use wax. I think a lot of people have questions about that. Glaze and wax are two decorative finishes. Let me show you guys the difference. So this is the Dixie Belle black glaze. So I want to get down to the, the really the important stuff. Wax. Yeah. Leah's asking how to spell my name. It's E-A-N. I just, <laughs> S -E -A -N, you know. S-E-A-N, like Sean Connery. He's, his, yeah, mom, yeah. his mom was a fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Maybe more how so. How old? Maybe yeah. more than a fan. So this is the Dixie Belle Black Glaze. And we're gonna tint this tonight because one of the things I hear most about the black glaze is it's a little too light and I like my glaze darker too. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to make this a little bit darker, but it's a liquid product. If I tip this, it's gonna pour out of the container. So glaze is a liquid. liquid. Glaze is great for when you wanna get in fine details because the liquid's gonna find the low spots for you. Wax is a solid, so this is my wax. Now I love wax because you get a smeary, smudgy effect with it. So we're gonna use gold tonight and we're gonna compare and then I have some other stuff I'm gonna show you guys if you hang out with me for a while. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start out with my glaze. And like I told you guys, the Dixmill Black Glaze is a little bit lighter than I prefer personally. I'm gonna pull this table over and I'm gonna show you how I tip my glaze. So I'm going to put a rag down because this is a stripped wood top. Are we dancing on this one or are we just yes. going to... I'm going to okay. need you to hop right up here. Just check. I'll hold the camera for you. Hello, ladies. So um, I like to tint my glaze with a little bit of coffee bean paint. And you can take the Dixie Belle glazes and make them whatever color you want. Um, you can even make custom glazes with the Dixie Belle clear coats. You just tint the clear coats to whatever color you want. So this is Dixie Belle coffee bean. And I'm going to take just a little bit of my glaze. And I'm going to use the lid as my little mixing container. So probably less, a little less than 50-50. And I'm just going to stir them together. <laughs> and this is just going to darken up the glaze to whatever color I want. Now you could do this with caviar. Um, now I'm going to mix a little bit more because I'm going to need more glaze than just that. Probably a little less than a 50-50 mix. A little lighter on the coffee bean, heavier on the glaze. I still want the consistency of the glaze. I like the consistency, I just want a darker color of it. So you can see where I'm going with that. 
So now I'm gonna take this tinted glaze and I like to use coffee bean because I feel like glaze is a way, um, it's an antiquing look. And usually, so you're trying to duplicate what would be dirt. And dirt is not usually pure black, it's shades of brown and um, coffee bean is a nice rich dark brown. Okay, so I like this consistency. And then I'm just gonna use a cheap chip brush. So what happens when you get coffee bean in the other? Uh, I'm going to probably end up tinting most of this, so I'm not worried about it. But if I if I were to stir that in, it's going to be so heavily diluted that you won't even notice that it's in there. I um, am not shy about uh, anything contaminating my products at all. So then I'm going to come into all this detail here, and I'm just going to brush this all into this detail. I want it in everything. So I'm just using a cheap chip brush. There's really no technique here other than that I want it to find all those low points. And I really like this color, which is the coffee bean mixed with the black glaze. I'm gonna make sure I get it into all the crevices. Now I'm gonna work in small areas at a time because once glaze starts to set up, it gets harder and harder to wipe away. And I do wanna wipe this away. I don't wanna leave this brown stripe across my, the front of my piece. I just wanna say hi to 500 plus of my closest friends. Oh, yeah, is that all? You just invited a couple people over? Yeah, no big deal. It's <laughs> going to be one heck of a tab. You guys are all going in the pool after this? Um, so what I want to show you guys tonight is the, the layering of the products. Is I use glaze in the low points, and we're going to come back and paint, add some paint on the high points of this detail. So once I've got my glaze on there, while it's still wet, I don't want it to set up, I'm going to take a dry rag, and I'm just going to come back and I'm gonna wipe all the high points back. Just using, this is just an old t-shirt, can be any type of rag. And then every once in a while it starts getting dirty, so I'll switch to a clean part. I'm not trying to wipe it perfectly clean right now because I'm gonna come back and clean this up with a baby wipe. And what this does is it's going to darken all of my low points. So I just added definition to all the low points in this mold. And it's probably a lot of detail you didn't see before. Oh, I saw it, Stacy. Like if I, what? 632 people. Oh, okay, I was like, what did you see? What, did I screw something it's up? falling apart, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, what did I do? Get the tape. <laughs> um, <laughs> people ask that question a lot, like, are there mistakes? You better believe there's mistakes. I tried to not show them <laughs> on camera, but you better believe there's mistakes. Um. So now I've got it in my low points here and I'm gonna grab baby wipes and we're gonna clean that up a little bit. Now had I not forgotten my baby wipes, that would've been ideal. Well, you know. And a really good comparison is you can compare it to this detail here where I've got no glaze on it and the details are kinda lost in there. So remember this is sealed paint. So I can take my baby wipe. Bam, bam. And I can clean this right up. because I only want it to stay in those low points. And your baby wipe, same as your dry rag starts getting a little dirty, so I'll move my baby wipe around. So you'll notice some places, I'm having to scrub this a little bit more because remember I said that the glaze starts to set up and it's harder to wipe away once it starts to set up. And then because I've tinted it with a little bit of paint, it sets up even faster because of that. So you want to work in small sections so you're not fighting with the dry time of the glaze. So when you uh, clear coat, how long do you wait before you start doing this process? Uh, after I clear coat, I usually wait overnight in between all my steps. So I clear coated this yesterday. And that's because I know that I'm going to rub at this clear coat a little bit. And I don't want it to be fragile. I don't want it to pull at all. This is just satin clear coat. It's not gator hide. But I don't want to start pulling it by rubbing at it. I'm gonna clean up some of this up here. You want to do this while your glaze is still wet. And I just clean up as much of the points as I can get to. I'll wrap the baby wipe around my finger and get it into those crevices and clean up as much as my finger can get to. And then any spots that my finger can't get to, that's where the glaze is going to stay. 
That's a little dirtier than I want it to be, so I'm gonna, I sprayed it with a little bit of water. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. So did you spray it or did you brush the clear on? Um, this one I brushed, I brushed. I will spray my final clear, but I just wanted a layer of protection, uh, basically so I could still play with it. Um, and then a layer of protection over my transfer. It just lets me be able to rub at it a little bit. So let's continue our glazing now. So I feel like this is pretty good. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Wow, always a critic, huh? It's okay. Okay, so I've got a little bit more of my glaze on my brush. I'm gonna come get this part down here. Digging it into all of those crevices. Just refilled my brush a little bit. Okay, I also want to get this crevice here around my rope molding. That's my would you bend. I try to not make any more of a mess than I have to. There's a spot up here that I'd like a little bit more of uh, the dark glaze on top of this mold. Make sure it gets into all the detail of that rope. And I'm going to come up here and get this mold too. Get up underneath it. And what glaze is this? This is um, Dixie Bell Black Glaze, and I've tinted it with a little bit of Dixie Bell Coffee Bean. We mixed them together at the beginning of the video. So if you missed that mix, you can go back and watch the replay, and you'll be able to see the mixture. And what, throw you a curveball, the white what color what's the white is that paint my um the white the paint colors on my piece here um that i started with so i've got dixie bell stormy seas this is this dark here this is vintage duck egg and then what looks like a white is actually um pink champagne pink champagne and champagne I, yeah pink, pink champagne you're super sophisticated <laughs> over here at brush by brady <laughs> Um, I rarely, rarely, rarely will highlight with a pure white. You guys will notice a lot that it's either a cream color or a dirty white. In this case, it's pink champagne. Um, I rarely will highlight with cotton because pure white is going to be your hardest color to blend. The closer your colors are in tone, the easier they're going to be to blend together. Now, in this case, I chose pink champagne because when you mix it into the blues, so this is where I'm wiping it back with just my dry t-shirt. I just want to get as much of it as I can with the dry, and then I'll come back and wipe the rest with my baby wipe. Your dry t-shirt? Uh, Sean's dry t-shirt. Sean's toothbrush. Contributing. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so That's sorry why that. mine was dirty. We're going to need to go to Target <laughs> later. <laughs> That's why mine was a little bit brown. I was wondering. Still used it. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I had a dental My teeth problem. Teeth like I used charcoal. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, I saw this commercial one time. Okay, now I'm cleaning this up with my baby wipe. Now, it's okay if it leaves a little bit of residual because I'm going for an antique look on this. That's the whole point of using glaze is to make it look a little bit antique. Now, I rarely... I, I'm not a fan of glazing. I don't make any excuses for that. I just don't like doing it. It's a messy process. Like you can see my, you're, you'll get it all over your hands. Um, I'll go through a hundred baby wipes. Thankfully, this is just this medallion in the middle here, but it's not a process I enjoy at all. I actually much prefer waxes and I'll show you, I'm going to compare them for you, but um, I do want to make some progress on this glaze first. because I, I usually will use them in conjunction with each other. It's never really, you know, an either or. I use everything together and it's that layering that gives you those complex looks. Okay, so that's- And then when you're done, you plan on recoating this. Um, in paint? No, 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 clear. Oh, in clear, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, once I have everything sorry, everything. done- everything. Everything done on this, it will get sprayed with a coat of clear. Huh? Everything done. Sean will get out that sprayer and a smile. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. what about a smile? Service with a smile. Yeah. So I'm going to focus on this side over here because this is just what I'm closest to. Now I'm going to do one more section glaze and I'm just going to finish up this part. Let me move this footboard aside because I don't really want to get it on there. 
we'll and when you uh, brushed the clear on, it was just satin clear? Just satin clear coat. That's all this has on it. And I waited overnight and now I'm glazing over the top. I will sandwich decorative glazes and waxes. I sandwich it in between two coats of clear. Mmm, sandwich. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> go for a sandwich too. My, my oldest son asked me, Mom, can we go get Mexican food tonight? And I was like, well. No, we're not going to because they're kind of protesting in the downtown. So we're not going to go down there tonight for Mexican food. But Mexican food does sound pretty darn good. So I'm going to come down here and get this part. And then I'll show you what I plan to do with some waxes and some paint on top of this. Because this is pretty, but I want to add some color that ties in with the colors that are in the transfers. I have enough on my brush, so I'm just going to come up over here and get this section, too. Sue says that uh, she needs a Sean. Yeah. I am available. Shh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, then. Wink, I didn't wink. know that. Um, yeah. So once you um, do all this, everybody this crazy, talented stuff that you do, whatever, um, how long do you wait before you spray it? Or, oh, wait, before I spray it. How long are you going to wait? <laughs> I'm going to wait until Sean says, yes, I can spray it for you. <laughs> so whatever that time 24 hours, is, three hours. Usually 24 six hours. Six weeks I if do, you're waiting I for me. I tend to do everything with 24-hour intro, intervals. Intervals. Um, Not yet, Stacy. She just wanted to know if we've skinny dipped. <laughs> <laughs> Big, big questions. Well, that was Sean's answer. Yeah. He's only speaking for himself. I don't want to scare my kids. <laughs> um, the kids have. The kids have. So, I mean, they've grown up with a pool, and the rule has always been, hey, it's our pool. It's our yard. It's only your family. If you don't want to put a bathing suit on, I don't really care. Um, so sometimes they get lazy and just want to jump in, and this will take their clothes off. Um Last night, I was painting for a while, and it's 100 plus degrees here in Sacramento right now. So I, I got done painting and went out and jumped into the pool afterwards. I'll tell you what, that paid for itself right there. Janet, we're using some glaze. Yes, this is black, glaze. black glaze. Glaze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is black glaze that I tinted with Dixie Bell coffee bean. So I wiped it back with my dry rag. I'm coming back and just cleaning it up with the baby wipe. I like the glaze to just sit in the very lowest points that I can't get to with the baby wipe. That's where I want to leave it. You can really control how much or how little you wipe it back though. So you can control. So I keep changing the baby wipe around to a clean area. And then I'll just ride that edge right there. Clean that up. Any places that I see that it's got residual I'm going to use it and clean it, clean up a little bit of this detail here. Although I planned it, we're going to paint over the top of this too tonight. So um, it's not going to be so dark by the time I'm done. Now, in reference to clear coats, did you clear coat before you put the transfers on? Or did you put the transfers on and then I put the transfer the on the coat? raw paint and then I clear coat it over the top of the transfer too. So right now everything is underneath my clear coat. Um, the transfer, a transfer should go on raw paint. It needs the bite of that paint. And I played around with it both ways. I played around with putting it over clear coat. And what I don't like about that, why I try to not recommend it, is because when you go to rub your transfer, and you need to rub it over the top of it to um, get rid of the halo around it. When you go to rub it and it's on top of clear coat, it doesn't have anything to bite onto. And it will start pulling your transfer back. So you kind of get an either or. You can put it on over clear coat, but then don't rub at it because it doesn't have enough grip. So see what my baby wipe starts looking like? Once this gets dirtied up, I need to I need to trade it out or it's going to keep, it'll just keep wiping back on the glaze that I'm trying to take off. See how pretty that is? Like in this would you bend molding right here. And what was the name of the would you bend that you used? So they don't have names, they actually have numbers. Now every one of these that I use, all the would you bend moldings that I use, which is a, this rope molding that's around here, and then these um, swirls that are here, those are all available through Dixie Bell. And they have numbers, and I don't know the numbers. I would be, I would have to be like a, you know, secret genius to memorize all the would you bend numbers. But they are all available through Dixie Bell, and my link is above in the post. 
Okay, so I like this here. I feel like my glaze is pretty clean. Now glaze sets up pretty quickly, so you all should be surprised how quickly this glaze sets up. So I feel pretty good about that. So now what I wanna do is people ask me a lot um, how I color, how I will hand paint all this detail here. And I'm going to hand paint it all. It's gonna look hand painted by the time that I'm done. But I'm not literally going to paint every little flower, every little leaf. I'm gonna put it Oh, you're on. leaving us. Yeah, I gotta go. Sorry. This is inconvenient for you. I have places to be. Now I'm going to put a heat gun on this to dry my glaze so that I can go over the top of it. So I'm going to throw a heat gun on this really quick. Really? Huh? Did you do this? My cord? You like that? Can you... Here. Oh, now I got to break. You want <laughs> hey, to stand on my shoulder? Let me show you. This is my power cord up here on the ceiling that Sean has tied up for huh? me. So I Sean, like I'm going to hold the camera second. while Sean gets yeah. up and gets my power cord down for me. Thank you. I need to make yourself all useful. Right. I'm really tired of doing all the work over here. It, it reels down from the ceiling. And he conveniently got that out of the way for me. So I'm just going to drive. Oh, Brittany place. knows. You can't leave me with these people. <laughs> I cannot be trusted. It really dries pretty quickly, but I'm gonna go ahead and dry this glaze for myself real quick. So how do I paint detail work? I'm just gonna focus on the part that has the glaze on it. I'm not gonna pay attention to this right here because it's usually layering that I do. So I use a couple things. Um, I'm gonna use cotton. Dixie Belle cotton is their purest white. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some white to this detail right here. And that's because you can see I've got white details on the footboard here. And I wanna tie those in with on the headboard too. So there's a couple different looks that we can go with. See, Jason understands, it's a master craft thing. We, no big deal. What's that? You can't, you, you just wouldn't understand mounting the, the power strips to this. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the mounting part, but then throwing it up so I can't even reach it. So oh, it's for your use. I use my fingers a lot. So I'm going to show you this. This one way is with my fingers. And all this right here, I used my fingers for. So I literally took my finger with a dab of cotton and I drew this line right here. This is how I did all this detail work. I just followed this line. Just like that. So we're going to do the same thing up here where I don't have any. And I'm going to start on here on the swirl. And I'm going to find areas of it that I want to highlight. And turn those raised portions into white. Turn those frowns upside down. Turn those frowns upside down. Little ray of sunshine here at Brushed by Brandy. Happy clouds. So when I did this on the footboard, I put it up on a horizontal surface so that this paint wouldn't drip because it can get kind of thick in, in spots because I'm putting it on with my finger. So the piece that I'm trying to match this with, I did detailing in the white like I'm doing now and then I'll come back and I'll highlight other parts with gold. And then it's got the contrast of the white and the gold. And random, but do you have a, a preferred baby wipe that you use? Um, no, I really don't. Um, from my kids, I preferred Huggies baby wipes, so I tend to buy the Huggies. So now um, I'm going to do some dry brushing, and I'm going to pull out my artist brushes. So when I buy artist brushes, I don't buy any particular brand. I've got a huge variety here. Some of these are really... Uh, I'm over here. Hello. Oh, you? Oh, <laughs> yeah, Sorry to bother bad. you guys. When I buy artist brushes, I buy a huge variety of artist brushes. Some of these are cheap dollar store brushes that you get in the multi-packs of 25 for like $5. Some of them are nicer quality brushes that, you know, this is probably a nicer quality one. These are um, nicer quality brushes. I have a spatula on one end. These are watercolor brushes that I stole from Tracy's class when we taught in Florida. Borrowed long term. Yeah, I'm going to give them back, of course. That's what you so, say, you borrowed long term. Um, I've got natural bristle artist brushes, uh, synthetic bristle artist brushes, 
I mean, I've got a little bit of everything and they all have a purpose. So when I paint in details like this, I'm gonna take one of my artist brushes. This is a synthetic bristle brush. I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of paint and I'm gonna dry brush these flowers. And as long as I hit the high points of this, it's gonna look like that flower was completely painted in. So I'm choosing white. I'll probably put in some pink too. Um, Cause I want it to tie in with all of the flowers that are around it. And I'm just gonna dry brush. This is cotton that I'm starting with. But by the time I'm done, it ends up looking like I sat and hand painted all of these little flowers here. Because they've got the dark and the low points. They'll have the lighter colors and the high points. I can layer my dry brushing, which just means um, doing one color after another. So I'm starting with white. I could come back and, uh, you know, there's a lavender in there. Um, oh gosh. Oh, a little bit of aubergine mixed with my cotton would be really pretty for that. And I'm gonna, just gonna do the white and then I'll show you we're gonna do the leaves too. So it's much, much quicker than hand painting in all of these little tiny details, but still gives you the same exact look. Sorry if I get quiet, you guys. Sometimes I get in the zone. When it's I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's preferred. <laughs> that came off your tongue a little too quick. Like oh, you was I mean, supposed to think about you, that? Yeah, you just uh, pause a little bit so I Sorry. at least feel like you didn't mean it. Huh? <laughs> Okay, so that gives me some white on my flowers. I'm gonna come back and put some green on the leaves. Remember, things are always uglier before they get better. Huh? That was a tiny drop of paint, too. I don't know if I've ever heard that. That they get uglier before they get better? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I tell myself when I look in the <laughs> you have mirror. Have a good personality while you're at it. So another thing you could do, we accented this one with my with my finger, but I'm going to show you some dry brushing is another way you can accent details. So for dry brushing, I like to use a synthetic bristle brush, and the Dixie Belle Premium Chip Brushes are really nice. Um, I don't have one in here. So I will just take a, a chip brush, which is a natural bristle because it's coarser, and just tip it in my paint, a little bit of paint. And then I'm even going to dab that off. I'm just going to use my apron here. And I will just dry brush, which means I've got a very dry brush. It's barely got anything on it. And I'm going to dry brush over the top. I'm refilling my brush. And I'm going to feather some paint in on these details here. Now this is not a high contrast because this is the pink champagne here. So you don't notice it as much, but when I come dry brush this cotton, very little paint. Over the stormy seas that's out on the edges, you notice it a little bit more. I mean, I have barely any paint on my brush. So is that a natural bristle This brush? is a natural bristle. Yeah. And so, let's see, let me show you the difference. Instead of a synthetic. Synthetic? You can tell there it's synthetic. Thanks, it's, Dana. it's a man-made bristle. This is a Dixie Belle mini brush. This one's well-loved, you can tell. I've even taught with it because it has my name on it. Um, but you yeah. can tell it's a man-made bristle. Synthet or a natural bristle brush is a, is a natural bristle. They're, they're coarser, they're, you know, they can be some type of animal hair. Um, uh, I don't know what else they use for natural bristle brushes. I don't know what they make the premium chip brushes out of, what kind of fiber this is. But it's a natural bristle versus this, which is obviously synthetic. There is no animal that has hair this color. Maybe there is. I don't know. Some kind of water buffalo somewhere, I'm sure. I prefer you. 
with the <laughs> well, I, I got, natural just because you throw them like ninja stars at me. I That'd got way good. too into that, huh? Yeah. We'll watch some Nat Geo tonight and figure it out. So what you want to do is... <laughs> so I like... I'll, I'm going to take this and I'm going to make the top a little bit wider and then it'll fade into this pink champagne and then it's going to come up from the bottom too. So let's come down here and I'll dry brush this detail. Just tipping those high points and then it's got... Then it's got the um, glaze in the low and that white in the high point. So for this particular look, I think I like this one here better than the one I painted in with my finger. And then I'm just going to go around and get this rope molding too, just dry brushing it. And this is just, I'm going to layer products on top of each other. I've got the glaze, I'm adding a little bit of paint. And I'm going to add metallic on top of this too. But by the time you're done with the layered products, it ends up with a sophistication that any one of the products on their own doesn't have. So let's add some color to these leaves and twigs. I should have done a bird too, because I really wanted to show you guys a bird. Let me glaze this bird right here, because I do want to add color to a bird. I'm just going to glaze him, and then I can come back and put more we'll colors on a bird too. So this is the glazing process. You apply it all over. This is Dick's Bell Black Glaze mixed with coffee bean. While it's still wet, I'm going to wipe it back with a dry rag. And it leaves this haze. That's okay. Like a halo. The reason that you um, seal your paint before glazing, you guys, is because the paint is porous. And whatever you put on top of it, um, it will the paint will absorb it. So if you want to wipe something back, and you do, you wipe glaze back. That's part of the process. If you want to be able to wipe it back, it needs the paint needs to be sealed. You need to close off the pores of the paint, and then you can wipe it back. There's my bird. He's got dark in the crevices. I'm going to leave that for a minute. Let's come over and do the leaves. I'm going to choose another artist brush. I'm looking for ones that have shorter bristles, a little more dense. And I'm going to use, let's do some kudzu. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what a kudzu is, but it is a paint color. So this kudzu is a really vibrant green. And so I'm going for, I want to tie it into these greens that I see in here. I'm going to add a little bit of kudzu. Bless you. And same thing, I'm going to dry brush this over my leaves. And I'm going to layer this with a little bit of um, Dixie Belle collard mm. greens. It's a vine, like a weed. Yeah, that's what you guys tell me, but I've never seen it before, so yeah. I don't believe you. Calling, calling crap on this. <laughs> we don't have kudzu in California. Bless you. <laughs> So I think I might have COVID. We do have that. That's the new color. <laughs> COVID. It's not a huge seller for Dixie Bell. So can you guys see where it's going? You can see it starts taking on this hand painted look where all these details have color in them. And all I'm doing is dry brushing over the top, letting the glaze take care of the low portions for me and they end up being completely covered. It's an invasive vine. So I guess, I don't know, what would we have that's similar? Like ivy? ivy? Even, even ivy, like people plant ivy deliberately. Do people plant kudzu on purpose? Come up here and get some of these leaves. And then I've got the base is my is my paint color. The base is my uh, Dixie Belle Vintage Duck Egg is the blue. So even the parts that don't get paint on them, they blend into the background. It doesn't look abnormal. And this is my last leaf that has glaze on it. 
Okay, we'll let that dry for a minute and then I'm gonna put another color on it. And the second color is just gonna add some depth to that. So I'm gonna use my coffee bean, which is the, uh, we tinted our, our glaze with, but I'm gonna use that to get these branches here. So, so I'm not changing brushes because kudzu is a dark enough color. And I'm just gonna And I could layer this um, coffee bean with a little bit of chocolate. Maybe throw in some white, uh, probably like a drop cloth for some highlighting along the top parts of the branch where the light would be shining. So down here on the underside, I'll do it a little bit darker. So the birds and the branches, where'd you get those? Uh, this, this is a mold. This is a mold. Um, it's the aviary mold by Redesign with Prima and they're all cast in resin. Um, I've done that on camera before, but you guys can check out my YouTube channel and I've got videos showing you how to cast molds out of resin. All right, so there's not a lot of branches in there, but let me grab, I'm thinking, I, so I just grabbed a, a light brown color. It happens to be putty. And I'm going to hit the tops of these branches. Same brush. I'm not changing out my brush. Do you hit them softly? <laughs> no, I go full bore at them. And then I'm just going to come up here. And give the branch a little bit, just like these have a light and a dark brown in them. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's add some dark into those leaves and we'll add some color into the flowers because they're a little I like Kathy's right question. Can you just buy these already made, these <laughs> yes. molds? Um, you know, I had people ask me that and I'm not, I, I'm actually debating whether that's something I want to start doing. I know you're like, shut up woman. Seriously. Like I need to take on another thing, but I, I actually, I, I don't mind making molds. It goes really quickly. So I'm going to come in here with these flowers. I'm going to lay this brush off a lot and I'm going to go, I'm going to brush over the top. Hmm. This is, is a, a mixture of Dixie Belle uh, Aubergine and Muscadine wine. I've used this on a vanity so I just have leftovers that are mixed. And that's going to add some purpley tones to my flowers. My white isn't all the way dry, so it kind of mixes with the white in some spots. I don't know. I've thought about that, whether I would, you know, I, I hate shipping. That's the thing. I hate shipping. But I have every single mold. Okay, I like that purpley tone. I want a little bit of pink in there. So a couple of uh, housekeeping things as yes. far as uh, molds. Have you ever used hot glue? Yes. Go to my website. Go to brushbybrandy.com. I have a whole blog written where I compare using all the methods of making molds, including hot glue and resin. The blog has videos in it, little two-minute videos of using all the methods to make the molds hot glue, resin, paper clay, and modeling material. And I promise it wasn't Sheila asking this. <laughs> what do I attach my molds with? Yes. Uh, um, do I have it out? Wait for it. Tight bond, quick and thick. Not thick and quick. Nope, quick and thick. And I like it because it's quick and it's thick. It's, um, tight bond is a, wood glue, is a brand of wood glue. Testimonial time. Let me, let me read the back of this. Bonds, wood, pottery, ceramic, stone, glass, fabrics, leathers, most crap type crap. <laughs> <laughs> most crap. Yeah. That sounds like I wrote that. It'll attach mostly any kind of crap That's you throw. That's a terrible out. label, by the way. <laughs> most craft type materials. <laughs> Although I'm Whatever sure, crap you want to bond, this will sure work. I'm sure guys do think that we are bonding a whole bunch of crap. What kind of crap did you bring home now? Uh, this is Dixie Belle Soft Pink. I'm putting a little bit of this on my flowers. Just softening me up. If you could move your hand, that would be great. Sorry if I'm 
in You're your in way. way. My mad artist skills. Did you leave those at the door? So I could make some sections more, you know, more white than pink, more pink than white. Let's add a little bit of variation in the green. It's a little bright for me right now. Need your shades? My future's so bright. Wear shades at night. <laughs> this is my brush for my white. I'm just gonna come back and hit some of these with a little more of the white. <laughs> Dina, that'll be the short answer in the future. Mm -hmm. Just Bond's crap, <laughs> yeah. whatever you... Yeah, this video could be so much shorter. <laughs> What's that? Uh, just you just yeah, put it on there. To, that here is whatever crap yeah. you want to put together. It's good. Highly recommend it. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I'm gonna grab another brush. And my leaves that I have the kudzu on, I'm gonna add a little bit of collard greens. So it's an evolution. I will let this dry and see what I what I think. What other colors does it need? Um, the screen is probably a little dark, like it needs a little more yellowy tones in it. Trying to wait for you to be so rude and get your hand out of the way so that I can there, have do a close look. ups. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the yellow and green. So the next color I'm gonna add in is holy guacamole. It's got that little bit of yellowy green in it. Guacamole. I know I could go for some guac too. Let me know when you make it. So I'm not individually painting each one of these these leaves. I'm just hitting points of them. Kendra <laughs> said it's finally happened. After seeing this piece, I'm ready to set fire to the one <laughs> I'm working on. <laughs> yes. So, that was my goal. That was my goal. Winning. <laughs> no, that's terrible. You guys, this, uh... That is no bueno. Yeah, no. It take, everything takes on an ugly stage. You're just in the ugly stage. you got to keep working through it. You just keep asking the questions, what, it, what does it need? Although you do have to know when to quit, too. You know, know when to hold them. Oh, jeez. Like, as Kenny Rogers would say. When he was making chicken? <laughs> yeah, as Kenny Rogers roasters would say. So I use my finger sometimes to, like here I just want that to go in the crevice, so I'm just kind of wiping it in there. I like the holy guacamole, that was totally what these leaves needed. So, it, it's layering. It's the dark and the low points, and then I layered those colors on top of each other, and it starts taking on <laughs> a little bit of sophistication. So let's talk waxes, you guys. I told you guys I wanted to talk waxes, too. So I actually want this to have more of a smudgy appearance just around this circle here. Maybe a couple other places. So I like to use waxes when I want a soft, ethereal look. I like glazes when I want clean, crisp details. So I really like the Dixie Belle Black Gilding Wax, but I'm gonna give you guys another, another tip too. Let your wax dry out. Leave the lid off of it, let it get hard and dry and crested and old. This is one of my first tins of wax. And can Looks you like guys, a shoe polish. It, it does, can you guys tell how dry this wax is? It's, um, let me show you guys a newer one. So you can compare it. 
This is a new Dixie Belle black wax. It's, Holy guacamole. It's very, mm, guacamole. <laughs> it's very moist. <laughs> very sumptuous. <laughs> it's luscious and decadent. This one's dry and crusty and old. So I'm so glad they can't see me. So, so Just shaking drunk, my so head. Here. My point is, for detail waxes, I like the old, dry, crusty wax. Um, I like this for an all-over application. So I deliberately let my Dixie Belle wax get... And then, when it's old like this, and dried out, left with the lid off, it's very close in consistency to the black gilding wax. Can you see that? So this becomes like a really rich, decadent wax when it's dried out. And then, I'm going to- You can just drop stuff. Yeah, I'm making, That's a, usually, I'm making yeah. a huge mess out here, by the way. Just had a brush off. Oh my skin. gosh. It's one of my favorite ones, too. Otherwise, I would get over it. But... Oh, here it is. This one. I like this because it's kind of a thick natural bristle artist brush. So I'm going to take some of my really thick wax, old, and I'm going to write this crevice here. Write it. And then I'm going to take. And I'm gonna smudge that out and I'm gonna soften this line. This is just a net, another uh, natural bristle artist brush. And I can make it go out as far as I want. And then I'm gonna wipe it back a little bit. And it kind of adds a little bit of a halo on, around that uh, center. I like to do this with the Dixie Belle Black Gilding Wax, but that dried out wax is a good, good, good replacement. And I'm gonna re-darken in here towards the center. So it's kind of a gradation. I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside here. So once I have it applied, now I'm gonna come back and work it out. Work it out. Work it, girl. This is as close to a workout as I get. Like now you cannot you push get push yourself. this, I don't know, I don't know, smudgy, smeary effect. You could not get this with glaze. So this would be a prime example of when I like to use glaze versus when I like to use wax. I'm gonna go all the way around this frame here. But just the frame is going to have Okay, once you put on decorative waxes like this, when you come back and do a clear coat, if you're gonna brush it, you have to brush it very gently because your Dixie Belle waxes are water-based. You'll pull them right back up. Um, I spray my clear coat, so I avoid that problem completely. But it is one I'm super sympathetic to that if you're gonna clear coat over the top of all this decorative work that I've just done, you gotta brush carefully or spray it. So I told you guys, we're going to look at some new Dixie Belle products, right? If you guys hang out through this really hard summer and all this hard shipping turmoil that Dixie Belle's had, they're gonna reward you guys with some new products. And one of them we're allowed to show you guys, it is a uh, metallic mousse. It is a thick, creamy, rich, decadent metallic. So, I'm gonna use my finger for this. You can see how thick it is. Like, I can pull at it on my finger. 
Whoa. and it's so rich that I don't even need that much of it. But Did this they is what I <laughs> don't you always. This is what I'm gonna use. For a little bit of metallic around this. So this is a product that won't be available until the end of summer. Okay, so you guys are gonna have to be patient, but trust me, trust me, it is so worth it. It is phenomenal. It gets amazing one coat coverage. It's water-based like a paint. And it's super rich. More rich than a gilding wax would be. So I'm putting it over the top of this rope molding and I'm going to work a little bit into these swirls too. I'm going over my white paint so some parts will be left white but I'm going to get the very tips of these leaves. It's kind of an acanthus leaf on here. And I'm going to get the very tips of them with the gold. So some of the white still shows. I've got the glaze still showing. And now I've got the gold. So I enjoy this part, but this is detail work and it does take a lot of time, but it makes the, a world of difference. Do the same thing with this one up here. Sheila wants you to explain Dixie Bill soak. Oh, Sheila, you're not supposed to see that yet. But I know people know, so I will tell you about it. Um, Silk is a paint line by Dixie Belle. It's, it's a Dixie Belle paint. It is being tested in the Australian market. There's a reason it's being tested in Australia right now. <clears throat> the reason is because Australia is a much smaller market than the U.S. market is. So it's being tested. It's already way more popular than they anticipated. But Dixie Belle is under um, extreme pressure right now with the COVID requirements. They're having to do social distancing in the office. Um, shipping demands have been uh, quadrupled since um, COVID started. So they're, they're working with everything they've got. So right now would not be a good time to introduce a new paint line to the US market. But if it proves as successful as we anticipate, then hopefully that will come to the US. But right now it is a paint line that's being tested in the Australian market. Um, Australia is like a little mini it's a mini world. It's an island, you know. It's a great test market because they're isolated. And um, it is UV resistant. It doesn't require a top coat. Um, it gives you more of those single color, very um, Nantucket looks. Um, but it's different than the existing Dixie Belle paint. So keep your, keep your fingers crossed for that. The mousse is something that is, is much going to be much more, much sooner probably than the U.S. will see that one. But I want to be honest with you guys. Okay, so we didn't work this part of it. So I really, I really want you guys to focus on this right here. And you can start to see how the paint colors in the leaves, just layering those paint colors out of depth. In addition to having the glaze in the low por portions, I've got my really soft halo of wax in my high portions. So what I've got going on over here is what I plan to duplicate to this portion of this emblem here. It's a layering of products, you guys. It's a layering of products from the lowest portions where my glaze is to the highest portions where I've got my metallic. Those layers all build upon each other and add this sophistication where it looks like everything in here has been hand painted by the time that I'm done. Got some pinks and purples layered on my flowers. Um, I'll probably come back with some metallics in the center of each of those. Um, but you can kind of see where I'm going on this portion right here. I'll move to the other side to do the other portion. So what do you guys think? Did that help at all to see that I like to use my glazes when I want a really crisp, clean dark line and I use waxes when I want to soften that up for that smeary smudgy effect is when I'll use waxes definitely. So I've been on forever tonight and I'm sorry because I had it's detail work it takes a lot of time but it's a step I, I really enjoy I'll sit out here and just get really enveloped in 
working each detail until I like how every little section around this area looks. Same thing with painting all this detail work in. It takes time, but in the end, it looks fabulous. So I'm gonna soften up this white with a little bit of dark waxes so it's not so stark. Right now it's pretty stark. Um, I'll soften that up, and then I should be done with this piece and I can put a new clear coat on it. So a lot of information tonight, a lot of information. Um, detail work is a, is a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys go. We had a great Thursday. You guys stay safe out there, okay? Be safe. Um, and I will catch you guys next Thursday. Um, keep an eye, eyes peeled for uh, final pictures of this. I've got some glaze here I need to clean up a little bit. But otherwise, I love the leaves on this. I love the gold. Oh, it looks pretty on camera. Yes, yeah, see right there? I need to clean that glaze off. Um, so I'll let you guys go. Catch me next Thursday, every Thursday evening here on the Dixieville page um, at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to go jump in my pool right now. Nice. And catch me some Mexican food somewhere. Um, but you guys have a great week. Thank you.